Hey guys, another day of birding here on Vancouver Island. I'm here at the Oyster River Estuary, which is, as the name implies, where the Oyster River, a smallish river, flows into the Pacific Ocean. Now, I said in my January review video that I wanted to be a little more strategic with my year list going forward. And really what that means over the next month or so, I'm gonna be focusing really on overwintering birds. One of the reasons I picked the Oyster River Estuary is there are four species of geese here I could add to my year list. One of which Brant is actually a relative of the well-known Canada goose, and that would be a lifer for me. I've never seen it before. Brant breed up in the Arctic, but they overwinter along the Pacific coast, and it'd be cool to see. And there's quite a few records here. They're a pretty common bird at this time of year, so I feel pretty good that I can see it today. Another species I might hope to find is long-tailed duck. It's been kind of evading me so far. I've been checking different spots for it, but no luck so far. We've had a pretty rainy week, so it's nice on a Saturday to have some good weather. It's a little cold, maybe six degrees, but not too bad. So I'm gonna get to it here. Thanks for watching, and let's go see some cool birds. Before I started birding, I took in the sunrise. The water lit up with an orange glow, which made some of the birds on the waves look amazing. Many of the birds seem pretty sleepy still. This group of mallards took to the waves after I arrived. Sorry about that, guys. I checked out this island to the north that had a few geese on it. I scanned the group for any of my target species. It looked like just a group of Canada geese, but maybe a cackling goose or two was hiding in the bunch. But no such luck, as far as I could tell. Heading down the spit, I came across a large group of shorebirds. There are at least four species present, which have been the usual suspects through the winter thus far. Black-bellied plover, dunlin, black turnstone, and a couple oyster catchers. But this was one of the largest groups I've seen. Maybe that's a sign they are getting ready for their journey back north. But then I heard a whoosh right beside my ear. The dunlins exploded into flight, with the oyster catchers tailing behind. The turnstones hit the dirt, and the plovers squatted into the water. A falcon had attacked the group on its morning foraging run. Unfortunately I missed it, coming in. I'm pretty sure it was a merlin given its size, but it all happened so fast. Thought maybe it could be a peregrine, but I don't think so. It was a pretty interesting interaction to start the day. After the excitement, I looked off the spit to see a group of seals. They were floating in the water and just looking around. Seeing seals so close is still novel to me, but sometimes I feel bad for them. They just look so worried all the time. Scanning to the south, I saw my number one target for that day, a group of brant a few hundred meters away. Self high five for getting a lifer. The brants formed a tight group, sticking close together. Every so often, they would flush into the air, then take a short flight out into the ocean before looping back. They were still hundreds of meters away, so I decided to head down the beach to try to get a closer shot. I made my way to this bar of sand and rock exposed by the tide. At the end of it were the brands. Now the last thing I wanted to do was spook them, so I set up behind this log. I was happy with my vantage, even though I wanted a better close-up. Not disturbing wildlife is the most important thing. Before long, they returned to their morning routine. Compared to Canada geese, brant are smaller and have a shorter neck. They are politely described as compact. They have a black neck, a brownish back, and are pale underneath. The Pacific subspecies, like these birds, have a broad white necklace and have a darker belly. On Atlantic birds, the necklace is incomplete and birds are paler underneath. The global populations of Brant is estimated to be about 220,000 individuals and they are considered least concerned by the IUCN. In the winter, Brant are coastal birds, often sticking around tidal estuaries. They feed on eelgrass, a type of marine flowering plant, and sea lettuce, a green algae. On the east coast, there was a blight that afflicted eelgrass in the 1930s which reduced the number of brants there and forced them to change their diet. In the breeding season, brant occupy low-lying wet coastal tundra. Brant were once considered the same species as the European barnacle goose, but they since were separated. Their Latin name is Branta bernicla. That species name reflects the words barnacle. Perhaps the weirdest thing about them, or really our perception of them, is that people used to think they emerged from goose barnacles or other materials like driftwood probably because they didn't understand their migration patterns or where they breed. But not everyone was fooled. Holy Roman Emperor Frederick II, who in between running his kingdom, dabbled in ornithology, wrote about the myth and its dubiousness around the year 1241. 
But even so, the myth persisted for centuries, with some sharing personal accounts of witnessing Brant's emerging from driftwood. It's a weird but interesting story that really shows our understanding of the natural world has come a long way. One thing that's for sure is that they're amazing creatures, and it was nice to see them that day. Hey guys, so that was some great birding there. It was great seeing the Brants getting another lifer and another new year bird for 2022. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. I'm going to check out this little marsh here, and we will see how that goes.